Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Dota 2 video. I know that some of you may have been expecting a fantasy video to come out. Uh, this is indeed that video. I wanted to wait one day in order to explain thoroughly what the Fantasy League is and how exactly it works. So unfortunately, if you missed day one of your fantasy roster, I apologize, but we're going to explain how you could best approach your Fantasy League with what cards that you have. Again, I need to state that your bronze cards will still work just as good as gold cards. You just get less tertiary points. What do I mean by tertiary point? It means bonus points based on whatever your extra stuff is on the card itself. You get accomplished just as much fantasy score as everybody else using bronze, as well as anyone using silver, as well as anyone using gold, if you play your cards right. So let's go ahead and jump into October 7th yesterday. Yesterday, there has already been quite a bit. As you can see, there is already a lot of people in the top 100 with about 600 or so plus, 500 or so plus in there. And trying my best to find out where, um, oh, hang on, is that Tomato right there? There's, there's one person I've been trying to look for. Anyways, I can't really find him in there. Um, I was going to look for Knoxville, because Knoxville is who I use and talk to every now and again to uh, find out stats about teams and players and such. The best way that you can sort of gauge what you want in each one is basically you could go over and hover each card for every day and see where your tertiary points manage to net you extra and base that on what you're going to do throughout the rest of the week. So all your tertiary points, you could see there's 22 extra points you could have got from runes grabbed, team fight, like all this extra tertiary stats that would have been put in there. So as as you could see here, I had obs planted, which is really bad. There was no extra points for that. You could see that obs planted is 0.3, however, for cores. But this one, I, I went really good. Like I had tower kills for Arteezy, and we all know how Arteezy likes to play. So that's where those extra tertiary points come in hand, which is that 114. Same thing here, obs planted for a support, and obs planted here for another support, 19 points. You could go, you can have literally no points based on whatever person you slot, but the best way that I look at it is that always try to slot in a team that has at least three sets of games for that day. And if they don't, then you slot in the next best thing. So in my, in for, for this week, basically, we were going to go and scroll down, figuring out who we want to put in our fantasy roster this time around for the 8th. Now, I, I think Chrome didn't shut down correctly. Oh, yeah. Chrome cr crashed when I was last trying to do something. So, basically, the way that fantasy points work is, is that you slot in the cards for teams that are going to be playing for the day. And like I said, ideally, you want to select teams that have more than two sets of games. Yesterday, EG had three sets of games, meaning EG had the highest potential amount of statistics that could have been pulled into your fantasy score, which I imagine most of these people ended up doing. But it looks like some, some of these guys just slot maybe whoever they wanted because they've just got their names on the front of the picture, whatever. Basically, just go off of who has the most amount of games during the day and who do you think is going to be out of those games, the victor. EG did a pretty good job yesterday, as well as, uh, of course, I'm going to put my personal favorite down because beast coast too old fucking secret and guess what secret you're not gonna fucking win this international beast coast is gonna whip your ass anyway uh teams like that that uh you wouldn't really see too often just rolling in i'd say but uh yeah you want to go ahead and find people who have more than two sets of games in the day and then work off of that so just go to the new DPC website, which I will post in the description down below and go to the group stages and select who is going to be playing the most amount of games in the next upcoming day. Uh, for the 8th, VC looked like they had the most amount, having a 3-1 score so far as well. They have the 1-2-3 sets of games with a 3-1 score. It's a little promising on their overall that they could go for. PSG, LGD are 4-0. The other big thing is, is that score is also based on the duration of a game. If a game goes on pretty long, they're going to get more fantasy points because the game has extended for a large period of time. I also put a Yapsor card in there because Yapsor is uh, pretty 
pretty strong player for Team Secret, and Team Secret is 2-2, and they have three games tomorrow as well. I always put in the PSG LGD because I believe that they are going to be the killers of this international, most likely leading into the score from the upper bracket with an almost undefeated record. However, I will state that I put in a PSG LGD card yesterday being a support, and that did not net as much as I had anticipated because the PSG LGD games ended very quickly. So in this scenario, I would recommend almost just full slotting VC gaming or full slotting because VC gaming are currently 3-1 and they have three games tomorrow, like I've stated. Elephant, I believe, also have three games tomorrow. They're also 3-1. However, Elephant is facing VC and I feel like VC definitely take the victor on the overall scenario here. Plus my gold card for Elephant's really bad. And as you were able to see in the previous statistics page, it these extra tertiary stats will not do well. Oh, wow. I have the most wonderful glare. Hello. Jesus. That is a glare and a half. But uh, yeah, this is basically how the fantasy stuff works out. Is you select your player card based on the core slot. It does not tell you if they are a 1 or a 2 or a 4 or a 5. You could put in whichever one you want in particular, regardless of what their actual position is. So you do want to do a little bit of research beforehand to figure out which one is a position 4. Which one's a position five in order to best find out. In fact, hang on. Let's go to let's go to camp stacked. How much camp stack was happened yesterday? None. Literally no camps were stacked yesterday. So this this camp stacked one is probably actually really bad. So we want to go back to DY and find one that's not a camp stacked. Probably deaths. Deaths as a support is something that definitely happens. So, because if we go over here, I believe I have a deaths on somebody. Yeah, deaths is 6.3 and 5.7. That's more tertiary stats than, um... Where was it? Camp stacked. 2.3 over 5.7. Basically, once you have your first day worth of data, you want to scroll through and figure out everything that's going on. There's also another website that's been put up that is going to help people find out more about those tertiary stats uh, that I will also put in the description below. I believe it was posted by Cyborg Matt uh, on Twitter, so we will see that in the description below as well. So the links you'll see in the description basically are Knoxville's who is going to win based on percentages so far, the Dota 2 Esports TI 10 schedule, and pardon me, I had to sneeze. And the um in the Toshieri stats statistics page posted by Cyborg Matt. So thank you all so much for watching this quick little video. I say quick, it's been eight and a half minutes on how the fantasy league works and how the point distribution works out so far. Stay tuned. We have two more videos I'm going to record literally right after this. So don't go too far. More Dota 2 action for you right around the corner.